Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, welcome to the Heartland Cafe. I almost said for another edition of the Live from the Heartland show, but that's on Saturday mornings. And uh, many of you have been here before. Is there anyone who hasn't been here before? Okay, we got two. That's good. Well, you both will have a great time. Uh, we were started back in 1976. We wanted to be a home where uh, people who care about the world uh, could come, could do events. And it has been that place since. Many wonderful folks have come through here. And uh, tonight we're really excited that we're going to have uh, two guys on the stage who have written a book called After Capitalism. And that's my favorite topic starting the day after the election. Um, we did have put up this exhibit in, in the honor of uh, my new friend, the Dada, coming here. Uh, this is the Salcedo 40-year retrospective, the People's Printers. And uh, if you look closely, there are many, uh, many slogans, many words, things that will touch your heart. And uh, I want to thank you for coming. I want to encourage you to listen in to the Live from the Heartland show on Saturday mornings. You can always get earlier editions, including you'll be able to get tonight's uh, videotape of tonight. will be up on youtube.com slash heartlandmedia. Uh, back in the early days, I used to run with this guy, Peter Cutner, and he is a, an active member of Port of Luz. And I would like to welcome Peter up here. And I want to thank you so much for coming. Do good the world. The world needs all the good that you do. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Always a hard act to follow. Um, the, uh, we're here as uh, 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 guests of the Heartland because we like to think of ourselves as people who do good in the world. Port of Luz uh, is a group of artists and activists and just regular people who care about what's going on and uh, would like to present some of those ideas out for discussion through words, through images, through sounds, through movement. Uh, we're a cultural organization. Um, and this, uh, uh, this event um, is about uh, the intellect and, and the words um, and some beauty, I must say. <laughs> Um, uh, Port of Luz uh, uh, is coming to the end of its 2011-2012 uh, year plus of programming that we call WPA 2.0, where we wanted to look at uh, uh, the old depression compared to the new depression, not so much of uh, what made the depression, but what did people do about it. Um, uh, the, we had a new deal. We waited many months, years for a new New Deal. Um, maybe the uh, second term will bring that along. Um, as we as we bring um, the uh, program to an end, a series of programs to an end, I want to mention two more programs. Um, uh, you'll be able to find them online at portaloons.org also a website page, a uh, Facebook page for uh, WPA, the, um, the new, new, what do you call it? I'm sorry, WPA 2.0, a brand new deal, I'm sorry. There'll be a film program, I think the 13th, uh, at the Nightingale Theater on, uh, on Milwaukee Avenue, uh, uh, co-sponsored with the Chicago Film Archive, who has, uh, uh, helped us choose some wonderful films uh, about women and work and unions. Um, so I urge you, urge you to come to that. And then later, I'm sorry, I don't have the date. Uh, there'll be a tour of uh, of murals through the uh, Mexican neighborhood. Is that right? I'm sorry. I'm the film guy. Um, uh, anyway, a few words. Uh, another few words about Port Luz. Uh, the name suggests, or actually literally translates, to the harbor of light. Um, we're, we're looking for things. We're, we're, we're all floating together in that safe harbor. But uh, the thing that uh, you should remember is that harbors are also a launching place, too. Not only a sanctuary, not only a landing place, but a launching place. Um, and one hopes that, that, launch, that uh, we will help and be part of the launch of whatever that new society is going to be. 
Um, before I introduce the gentleman who will tell us about that new society, uh, I want to ask you to please take this little piece of paper seriously and give us your thoughts. Uh, tell us what you thought of it, even if you didn't like it. And if you leave early, please fill this out. Um, we're doing this at the, with the, the, very, the goodwill of the Heartland. Um, there's a donation can up here. And if you go to portaloose.org, uh, you will find uh, a way to make a, uh, a contribution. Anyway, I'm going to you uh, my friend David Schweiger from, uh, he goes to a neighborhood school, I'd like to say here. It has to be Loyola University. Thank you, David. Yeah. Thank you all very much. Thank you for coming. Actually, I'm just here to introduce two people, the uh, speaker, but also before that, uh, Jesus Rodriguez, the Consul General of Venezuela, who you may know because, in my experience, whenever a lot of good people get together about a progressive cause, Jesus is among us. I don't think there's another Consul General. I'm sure there's no other Consul General in the city of Chicago. I don't know about the United States like Jesus. So you want to come and say a few words? Hi, how are you guys? Thank you for letting us be here and somehow support this initiative. Mm. My name is Jesus Rodriguez. I'm the Consul General from Venezuela here in Chicago since 2008. I've been already four years. We already know the, uh, how important Harvard Cafe is for the city of Chicago in terms of progressive thinking, so we are always glad of you know, visiting Harvard Cafe. And we also know from a long time the important work that Porto Luz do uh, in terms of promoting cultural and progressive activities within the city. And we have been from time to time working with them and we are very honored to, to, to co-work with them somehow. Mm. Well, no, I, I, I have three things that I, I want to highlight before introducing the data. One of those things is Basically, what, what I believe is the, is the whole uh, uh, issue that is developed in, in the book uh, and it's what we can see right now in the news outlets and everywhere about what is happening with the capitalist system. So in that sense, I believe that events like this somehow highlight the necessity of thinking in something new. You can, you can call it communism, you can call it post-capitalism, or you can call it post-neoliberalism, or you can call it whatever you, you, you wanted to call it, but the truth is that all the signs that are around there, especially in Europe and here in the US, are showing that something is not going right in terms of economy. So in that sense, what, what, whatever kind of analysis that helps people realize that there is a problem in the system uh, is always very appreciated for us. So I believe that that's one of the key uh, elements and the key issues that the people in the crowd center uh, um, debate, work on. So that's why we consider that it's important to be here. Uh, so. That's one of the things that I wanted to highlight because this is part of the debate. I mean, you can call it socialism of the 21st century, you can call it post-neoliberalism as we actually organized an event in Boston a few weeks ago with that name. I mean, what is post-neoliberalism? What is happening at least in South America in terms of realizing that, that what happening in the world is not right? So what proposes from the South can be you know, presented to try to, to see what we can you know, present to, to, to build a new alternative. So in that sense, that was one of the things that I wanted to highlight. The other element is like knowing Sprout. I actually was talking with the Zada a few a minutes ago and meeting him for the first time and I was letting him know that we didn't, I, I didn't have too much information about this proud, the Proud Center because it's actually a new organization, mostly in Venezuela at least. 
and actually uh, it started operating in Venezuela the year after I came to the U.S. I mean, I came to the U.S. in 2005, uh, working as a deputy consul here, and, and they start operating in Venezuela in 2006. So I didn't have too many reference about the, the work, but a few months ago, a group of professors and teachers from the University of, the, of Chicago and different universities within the city approached us to ask for some guidance because they were planning a delegation to Venezuela and they told us that they already had contacted the people on the Sprout and we learned for the first time a few months ago about them and then they came back and let us know how good the, the whole experience was and somehow that makes you build your own idea of, of what Sprout Center means. So. Uh, so that was the second point that I wanted to highlight that besides the, the, the nobility of the, of, the, of the work, at least in Venezuela, they have been building a, a reputation in terms of you know, uh, dealing with, with new ideas and working with, with people in Venezuela and people from abroad that want to contact Venezuela. So, so that's something important I wanted to say. And uh, yes, to finish my words, I just wanted to let you know that we are going to have elections in Venezuela. Some of you might know that, but we're going to have elections in Venezuela next Sunday. Usually, we are already used to having very heated up elections in Venezuela, so the whole uh, confrontational and heat up uh, atmosphere that usually is created around elections in Venezuela. Uh, doesn't affect us too much because we, are, we, le we have been learning about that. But anyway, I wanted to let you know and remember you that this Sunday we're going to have presidential elections in Venezuela. There's a candidate from the Progressive Forces, which is, of course, Hugo Chavez. And there's another candidate from the right wing here, which is Enrique Capriza Radomsky. So most of the polls are saying that Chavez is going to win without difference, a margin of percentage of difference uh, that might go from my personal appreciation between 10 and 15 percent. So uh, we have been working in uh, not, not only abroad but especially in Venezuela to try that to make that margin bigger because a smaller margin might ignite uh, some excuses from the opposition, especially from the right wingers, to try to generate this stabilization in Venezuela. So we are trying to work hard in terms of make the the winning bigger. So uh, I just want you to be aware of that, to know that we in the consulate are always open to discuss whatever progressive issue that you want to present to us or project or whatever. And with those three issues that I wanted to highlight, I want to introduce you the data from the Proud Center in Caracas. Capitalism, uh, and it had a subtitle: Prout's Vision for a New World. The author was Dada Maharesh Barananda, and I wondered at the time, you know, who is this guy Prout? You know, and who is this guy with his long name? Uh, but I also noticed that his had an introduction by uh, Noam Chomsky. Uh, and I have to confess, I had sent my manuscript to Noam Chomsky asking for, you know, maybe something, and he didn't give me anything. So, uh, so of course, I had to read this book. So which book did we read first? Uh, I did only had to read the one. Uh, so, uh, and I was impressed. You know, I wasn't, you know, it was, we were sort of on the same page. Uh, 
In 2011, I decided to bring out a revised edition of After Capitalism, which did go on sale, by the way. And then a couple of weeks ago, I get an email from this guy with a long name uh, asking if I might be interested in saying a few words about his revised edition of After Capitalism. Uh, and by then I thought, yeah, you know, I will read it. You know, he sent me the manuscript. Uh, and here's what I said as a, a blurb. Uh, this is an amazing book, breathtaking in its range and ambition, an uncompromising critique of capitalism, an outline of a new world economy centered on cooperatives and local sustainable production, a theory of history, a compelling philosophical spiritual vision, specific information about movements and experiments going on today all over the world, guidelines for getting involved in becoming a social activist and spiritual revolutionary, even slogans to write on your protest banners, and more. Uh, one need not agree with everything here to find this book a treasure trove. And I would say it's a much bigger book than the first edition, and it's just full of things. Uh, I would, so many things, uh, Hungarian youth movement, you know, a, a, a movement in, uh, in Nicaragua, I mean, in Guatemala, among the Mayans that are involved in this, organic gardening, spiritual, just on and on and on. I mean, you can just dip into here.